the ranch dr uptown here i almost made a fatal youtube error and did not film what i was getting ready to do for you guys uh give you a little background here this is a uh, ruger american in 243 that we got in a while back and did a cerakote job on it but <clears throat> a couple of issues came up i mean obviously this is not necessarily a precision rifle but there's no reason that it shouldn't be as accurate as possible and what was happening with it was it would uh, group two shots real nicely and then the follow-up shots after that were all over the place and really couldn't figure out what the issue with it was one of the things though that we did come up with was the owners had initially noticed that the barrel was touching along the side points and then the more and more we got to looking at it the more and more we realized just how much twist there was in the stock and what it was uh, probably doing as they were firing it was it was throwing that shot off because of it touching here and there so what we've decided to do and uh, in some discussion with uh, Matt over at Riz Arms is we're going to glass bed this thing now obviously the initial intent with this rifle was for it to be a free floating barrel but in discussions with matt and some of his experiences and a couple of buddies of his have had basically the same problem with this type of rifle uh, what they've done is they've gone and embedded in this entire forward portion of the stock to both strengthen it up and to add some weight to it now the one thing this stock originally has is it has a steel bed that indexes on the action itself here and here and then clamps in and that's what is supposed to keep it free floating but as you can see this stock has so much weakness to it that it just doesn't allow for that now and like say to talk with Matt it seems like that some of the newer versions of this stock actually have a steel bar in place of this plastic ribbing and that adds both strength and takes away a lot of the twist so what our plan is is we're going to get some automotive body filler fill in these cavities and then uh, take and wrap some thin fiberglass over the whole thing and then once we've got that done and set up and dried up then we're going to follow that up with some uh, Acrogel glass bedding and go ahead and gla glass bed this thing all the way out to the end. So we'll keep you guys uh, along with us for the ride and we'll see what happens. Okay guys, once again I got started without you. Uh, I'll try to do better the rest of this. Uh, so basically what we've done is we've filled these voids up with uh, just body filler that you can get at an auto parts store kind of uh, tapping it on the counter here to see if we can get any air bubbles out and make sure that it fills all the voids up we basically got it filled to the point where it is even with where the barrel um, cutout was on this stock so Obviously, you can see that we've got it taped up to kind of uh, preserve our paint job as much as possible. So what we'll do is we'll just keep, kind of keep vibrating this until uh, it starts to set up. It takes uh, a little while for this stuff to start to set up. And once it starts to set up, then we'll uh, let it harden all the way and uh, get our sander out and sand off some of the excess start to kind of chamfer this for the uh, barrel extension once we get that done then we're going to actually come back with some fiberglass mat and uh, layer fiberglass mat in there again it'll take some setup time so we'll let it do that and then uh, the final step will be to uh, 
finish this up with some uh, glass beading product to bead this thing all the way out. Like I say, as I do this, I do kind of run into some air bubbles coming up, so I try to dispense with those air bubbles. There's a big one right there. Dispense with those air bubbles and keep tapping it to let this stuff fill back into that void. Eliminate all the possible voids that we might have. So, like I say, that just kind of updates you on the process of where we're at right now. Alright, so here we are. Uh, our uh, body filler is uh, hardened up and we're going to just uh, kind of finish doing some sanding on it here. Got a, just a little sanding wheel on a Dremel tool, kind of going in, just kind of knocking some of the high spots off. As you can tell, we've been doing this a while. And got it fairly smoothed out. So once we've uh, completed that part of the task, then we'll get our acro gel out and begin uh, setting it up. There's a few steps to the process that we got to endure first. So. We'll come back in just a minute and explain to you what we're doing. Okay, so we're just going to continue on with this as we go along here. Uh, what we're using is uh, Acrogel. It's uh, sold through Brunel's. It uh, comes as a kit, the uh, two parts of the epoxy and a release agent, mixing cup, the whole nine yards. So pretty good stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and apply our releasing agent to the action everywhere that uh, potentially is going to get um, potentially is going to be in contact with the beads we're going to put our release agent on it recommends two coats it is kind of an alcohol based uh, release agent uh, that goes on I guess it's probably got some kind of a thickener in it or something that um, adds to it but as the alcohol dries um, it just uh, the alcohol evaporates and leaves the uh, release agent product I assume it's some kind of a thin gel coat type stuff or something but uh, leaves it on there it does recommend at least two coats of it so we'll go ahead and here in a second give it a second coat and see how we're doing on it uh, we are going to go ahead and just kind of try to make sure that we get it on plenty thick enough so that it gives us a, a good thick base of the release agent. There's no need to skimp here. Uh, as you notice, this is a uh, Cerakoted uh, gun that we've done here a while back. And we did, before we... Uh, started filming this we did test a little area to make sure that it didn't stain the Cerakote so that's why I'm not too concerned with uh, how much product I'm actually getting on there because it will wash off but uh, like I say, we're going to go ahead and just make sure that we've got a good thick coat of this product on there so that uh, any of the uh, two-part epoxy that uh, does try to hold on to it will uh, come loose. So once we've completed that, we're going to let the action dry and uh, the barrel, and then we'll come back and uh, do our mixing and uh, set this thing in the stock and see how it turns out. Okay, well, one of these days I'll get enough video camera memory to do something with. But uh, what we've done is we've gone ahead and set the action in, we've bolted it into place, and now I'm just kind of taking some of the excess off. Um, really wasn't exactly sure how much to use, so we probably got a little carried away with uh, what we mixed up. Probably actually have enough to do about two more rifle or another rifle with, as you can see, from our mixing cup. So lesson learned on that but basically like I say this is just a two-part epoxy we'll uh, give it time to set up and uh, 
once it sets up then we'll remove the action back off of the uh, stock and see where we're at but uh, the way it's looking right now it's looking pretty good like I say we've moved most of this excess off of here we'll leave the rest till later um, like I say the release com the release agent seems to be doing its thing so we'll uh, get this thing back together uh, once this epoxy sets up take it apart and see where we're setting at so we'll update you when the time comes all right folks we're back we've allowed our uh, bedding to uh, firm up overnight so now we're going to remove the action from this stock and we'll see how well we did um, if there are any voids or anything we can go back and kind of fill those in after the fact uh, you will notice we've uh, cerakoted this uh, stock green we did the uh, rifle action itself in a can but the uh, stock we did in a the stock itself we did in a uh, World War II OD green. So we did in fact have some voids here, it looks like, but that's no problem. What we'll do get that cleaned up and we'll just fill those voids in with a little bit more compound and then once we've got that taken care of then we will sand everything down so that it's a good uh, nice clean look to it and then Cerakote the bedding area so yeah we'll fill this void in this void here which I was concerned with here because I knew I was gonna have to be filling in quite a bit but as far as the rest of it is concerned it actually looks pretty good so we'll take care of that uh, after we get this other filled in and replaced so we'll continue on so anyway the objective here once we've got the action kind of seated back in is to kind of clean all the excess squeeze out off to minimize your finish work in the end because what will actually happen is you'll actually have some buildup on top of the stock and uh, that you'll have to sand and make make it right so that the stock goes back to where it originally was at but what you have is all your voids filled while doing that. So like I say, basically what we're doing is just kind of making sure that the action itself and or the barrel itself and the stock are as melded together as they can be so that uh, any any uh, voids should be taken care of without having uh, any overlap underneath. It's kind of a guess It's kind of a guess as to um, what it's going to look like underneath because simply because we can't see under there to tell you what it's going to look like for sure but we're hoping to uh, get things as meshed together as absolutely possible so that's where we're at until this dries once again uh, I realize we kind of keep going back and forth with this, but this is just one of those fiddly things that you just can't put a polishing wheel on it and uh, all of a sudden life is 
a joyous place. So, so what we're going to do is just let this finish setting up and we'll come back and see what it looks like when we crack it back open. Okay, so we'll see if we can get this action to break loose for us a little bit. Okay, so broke loose pretty clean. We'll have to go back and uh, clean our release agent off the barrel of this, but all in all, we look pretty good here. time we came out much cleaner than we did before so we'll start stripping this down and remove our tape and I suspect that what we will have to do particularly on this upper end here is get out and do a little gentle filing I that a lot of that's not going to break away super clean. Not quite too bad. Do still have a little pliability in some of that epoxy. So. That's not necessarily a bad thing though. The goal is, once we get this all done and cleaned up and looking good, is we'll go back through with our Cerakote and repaint the inside of this stock to match it so that it's not... not real obvious what we've done here but like I say all in all fairly satisfied with what we got we'll see how things go and take our uh, file here and kind of clean up the top of this stock We actually have tape underneath a lot of this overflow here. So, kind of our marker of when we're getting close is going to be when we get down to this tape. See it starting to expose and then peel away. Thank <laughs> you. 
piece of tape to clean up here. And I think that'll have it. Okay, so that did add some weight to the front of this stock. One of the things that we're going to do also, because this stock is hollowed out completely in the rear, is I've got a plan for filling this rear portion of the stock here. Um, like I say, it's hollow. We're going to make that a little bit solid too and see if that will help strengthen it up, take some of the twist out. But all in all, right now we're looking pretty good with how this is setting in the action on that on this Ruger so we will um, finish up do some uh, repainting and uh, show you the finished product when we get done alright so we've uh, finished up coating the uh, stock where we had gone in and done our bedding and got it back matched with the rest of the stock. We did uh, fill the butt stock so that it's uh, more solid. Now in the beginning of this you'll remember we uh, kind of gave you an idea of how much twist this had and you can see now that there's significantly less twist to it um, actually very minimal comparison to what we had before so we're hoping that this uh, cleans up the accuracy on this rifle uh, you know really don't have anything to go off of like I say I did uh, did talk to Matt down at Riz Arms and uh, this is basically what a buddy of his had done to uh, fix that Ruger American so we're hoping that it fixes this Ruger American also anyway this is the uh, Ruger American in 243 and we've uh, bedded and strengthened up the stock to uh, hopefully uh, make it a little more accurate I do hope you guys find this interesting we'll talk to you later and you have a nice day